What's up? Wonderful people of Earth, thank you very much for clicking this video. You are a wonderful soul, man. Respect to yourself. You see, love is very pleasing to the heart. And that feeling is very good, man. And it makes someone feel nice. So here we spread love, unconditional love, among humans across the whole world. While reacting together to different types of videos. Good vibes, creepy, you name it. All with the intentions of spreading love, peace, forgiveness, and unity among humans. Straight out of Africa with lots of good vibes. Kindly hit the like button, watch it at the end, grab some snacks, and leave some comments. Good vibes, man. That's the video. The picture called Checkmate. You don't want to miss this. There's a picture in the museum in the Louvre. I don't know how many of you have been there. The picture is called Checkmate. The devil's sitting on this side. There's a chessboard, and there's a guy sitting on the other side. And the guy sitting on the other side has his hand on his head like this. And he's like in desperation. And as they were taking a tour through the Louvre, there had been a group of, 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 of athletes and particularly ch world champions that were being given a special tour. And in the tour was the world chess champion. And he comes walking by the picture. And the guy's explaining to him, this is a picture of an artist's rendering of somebody who lost a battle with the devil. And so the group moved on to the next picture to see something else. But the world chess champion he stayed there and he just kept looking at the picture and soon they noticed that he was not with the group and so the tour guide came back and said we've, we've, we've moved on are you are you coming he said well i've been looking at this picture and the guy said yeah he said it's it's called checkmate the devil's laughing the man's lost and he said, yeah, he said, I've been noticing that. He said, but while I've been standing here, I've kept looking at the picture. I, I'm, I, I've, got, I've got a problem. And he said, well, what, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a world champion chess player. And I spend my life playing chess. And normal people don't always see what a world champion chess player sees mm. he says but when y'all walked off i looked at the devil laughing and i looked at the man in desperation but he said i noticed something on the chessboard he said either they're gonna have to change the painting or they're gonna have to change the name and the guy said, well, why are they going to have to do that? He said, well, you know, I'm a world champion chess player. Yeah. And he said, when I observed the board, I found out the king still has one more move. I come to tell somebody today, you believe you've been cornered. You believe everything is gone and nothing has got any hope. But the king still has one more move. I dare you to declare it. The king has one more move. He has one more move over my finances. He has one more move over my marriage. He has one more move over my kids. It is not over. Oh, man. Good vibes. Look so what they got going there. on at this fashion show. Look what they are introducing, y'all. At the Schiaparelli brand show, they presented a fashion accessory. A doll resembling a child covered with microchips. What's your immediate reaction to this unconventional fashion piece? Like, first of all, I have so many questions. Is that a real child in there? I honestly wouldn't put it past these people because you know what type of activity they get into. And for some reason, whenever they have these fashion shows, whatever they present always comes to pass. Like, remember they had that fashion show where they had uh, dirt and mud everywhere, and then literally the whole um, the whole incident at Burning Man happened, you know, because they were kind of predicting that. But you see what I'm saying? AI Is AI birthing? Is this what's going on? Yeah, there's something going on in the world, you guys, because it's like, how do you think of things like this? <laughs> like... It's like people 
are devolving backwards in some way. It's like, who thinks of this idea? But then again, it's art. Mm -hmm. Art comes from the heart. But yeah, this. let me know what you guys think about this video. What is going on here, you guys? Let me know. 2024 has not felt this yet. Like the, I feel like the videos are going to get a lot more interesting, you guys. So keep sticking with me, y'all. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. You already know what to do. Keep up with me on my other accounts, especially on my YouTube, where I go deeper on the esoteric level of these topics at hand. We end this shift, y'all, and we getting it. Peace in. Oh, man. Hmm. I got my first computer in 2005. You might be wondering how I got on the internet before that. Well, I used a web TV. Web TV was an adapter that used your TV set to connect to the internet. Web TV started in 1996, but I didn't get mine until the beginning of 1999. You would just plug your landline into the back of the web TV, and then you would plug your audio and video from your TV set into here. Because there's a video jack on the back of the web TV, you could easily plug it into a VCR, which is why I have footage of surfing the internet in 1999. This was the screen that you saw as Web TV connected to the World Wide Web. Then you would pick your account. There was one main account and you could have up to six secondary accounts. Put in your password and woohoo, we're online! Okay, this is the first forum I ever joined, the HorrorMovies.com board. I spent a lot of time on there. Here's what images looked like on web TV. Since you couldn't change the width of the screen, it just oriented all the pictures to the size of the TV. Web TV was not capable of doing everything that you could do with a computer, but you could use a web TV to go to chat rooms. The first chat room I ever went to was at the Horror Movies chat at horrormovies.com. I used to chat a lot with Silky Ninja. We'd talk a lot about how we liked Red Baron Pizza. Okay, let's go to lycoschat.com. It could be a bit of a challenge sometimes getting the yellow box to highlight the right thing. I would sometimes chat as Corey Haim. There were people who thought I was really him. Private message from 101 Drew 101. You are a has-been. Very funny. Somebody created a room called Cops Who Flirt. Web TV didn't have any hard drive space, so you couldn't download anything. Web TV gave you a bunch of these cards that you could write your name and email address on and then hand them out to people. And here's a quick look at what Web TV's inbox and mail looked like. A couple years after I got the Web TV, I upgraded it to the Web TV Plus. One of the best features of the Web TV Plus was that you could capture video images and email them. You could do this by plugging a VCR or a video camera into the video in jack. I used the video capture feature to put images on my website, which was then on the Web TV servers. Eventually, Web TV changed their name to MSN TV. And this is what the connection screen looked like for MSN TV. Web TV was a very primitive internet device, but I have a lot of good memories of using it all those years. Oh. Bro is Bad. 30 meters underwater right now. I need y'all to understand something. One meter is the length of one singular football field. This nigga is a good 28 football fields deep with no scuba gear off of one singular breath. I also want y'all to see how majestic this nigga is. Bro goes under whatever the fuck this is, right? And he merges like a god look at this majestic ass shit yeah i don't know how this nigga isn't panicking bro i would be going absolutely crazy ah what the fuck Frito is that oh my god hmm how my group forests protect coastal cities oh this is interesting hmm Oh man, this time was a full of When good the advice. Vatican's Advanced Technology Telescope and the Large Binocular Telescope were being built, why did the indigenous peoples of Arizona, especially the San Carlos Apaches, why did they join environmentalists in filing dozens of lawsuits 
before a federal appeals court to try to stop the construction of the observations on uh, Mount Graham. Um, the project ultimately prevailed in favor of the Vatican and NASA after an act by the United States Congress ordered it to be done. But the question remained in our mind, why had the tribal communities fought so diligently against the construction of telescopes atop that mountain? Mount Graham is considered one of the four holiest mountains in the world for the Apache and is considered sacred to all of the region's native peoples, and it is so because it is what we might call a stargate. In their mythos, a portal through which the star people have come since the dawn of time. And once we understood that fact, our suspicions as to why the Vatican and NASA had chosen that mountain in particular, um, even being willing to face a prolonged legal battle to build these telescopes on Mount uh, Graham, including the largest binocular telescope in the world where the Lucifer device is kept, uh, why would they have gone to all of that trouble? Why not just go to another mountain range and find basically the same height, the same environmental conditions? Why did it have to be that mountain? Um, now, we came to learn another thing, and that is that the San Carlos Apache um, have these preserved ancient tales concerning Mount Graham and that geography, including stories very similar to biblical chronology. Um, these legends involve a creator, uh, a deceiving dragon that follows an epic flood, and even a race of giants known as the Jindupids who were judged and destroyed by God. According to the legend, a race of Indians called the Tartans lived in the valley uh, between Tucson and Phoenix. These were just peaceful farmers, uh, and they prospered until one day they were invaded by the Jindupids, described as Goliaths, who were so huge they used tree limbs for toothpicks. Well, these Nephilim <clears throat> were led by this massive man they call Evil Ken, um, who allegedly came from the northeast and were headed south to their home beyond the Gulf of Baja. Um, these giants nearly wiped out the Tartans before they ran and hid themselves underground and in the mountains and prayed to Father Son, who then threw this huge fireball that came down to the earth, seared the monstrous Nephilim into the scorched uh, mountain rock, and wiped them out. Now, elements of that tale uh, are obviously mythological, but it has a remarkable thematic coherence with Genesis chapter 6. The Apache creation myth is also interesting in this regard, um, as a particular version involves what they call the one who lives above, who descended down over the mountain in a flying disc uh, at the start of creation. Their, their myth begins, in the beginning, Nothing existed, no earth, no sky, no sun, no moon, only darkness was everywhere. Um, and then the legend starts before noting that suddenly from the darkness emerged a disk. One side of it was yellow, the other side of it was white. Uh, it appeared suspended in midair. And within the disk sat a bearded man, the creator, the one who lives above. Um, now, besides this creator who rides in a heavenly disc, there's a dragon with the power of speech that turns up, bargaining with mankind, as well as supernatural gateways associated with mountains through which spirit beings have and can come. So suffice it to say that these ancient native ideas involving flying discs, flying creators, spirit guides, even owls and a talking dragon or a great serpent, uh, and supernatural gateways tied to mountain ranges. Um, this is something that began long before the Vatican cast its eyes on Mount Graham. Think how much these legends mirror what the Bible teaches, including the idea that mountaintops or high towers uh, were often depicted as places where doorways into the supernatural could be opened. For instance, Nimrod of biblical fame 
sets out to build a tower whose top will reach into heaven, Genesis 11:4 says. This was the infamous Tower of Babel. And uh, Nimrod was designing it so that the top of it would extend into Shamayim, heaven, the dwelling place of God. Um, the Jewish Encyclopedia confirms several historical records that Nimrod, who it establishes, was also identified by various ancient cultures as Osiris, Orion, Apollo, Gilgamesh, that he had built the Tower of Babel specifically to ascend into the presence of God, literally walk um, onto a high place and enter heaven is really not as far-fetched as it sounds. There are numerous records, including in the Bible, that appear to substantiate the idea that heaven can be attained on high towers or mountainous locations. So think about Moses meeting with God on Sinai, um, Jesus returning atop the Mount of Olives, the 200 watchers that descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon, and other examples, including Jacob's Ladder. Oh. I begin to pass out. Then my head hit the wall. What is the it's the non-physical side of ourselves. It's the spirit side of ourselves. The idea being that what we call a soul sort of splits itself to have a physical experience into two. It creates or remains partly non-physical and creates a physical focus that allows us to experience ourselves as physical beings. But the higher mind sort of remains on the mountaintop while the physical mind is sort of down in the valley and wandering around, but it can't see around the next corner, but the higher mind can. So when the higher mind's going, go this way, go this way, go this way, by sending us the idea of this would be exciting, this would be passionate, wouldn't it? If we go with that, then we follow a path of least resistance because it's guiding us from on high because it has a broader perspective. If we ignore it, then it's going, well, okay, go ahead, but you're gonna probably fall into some holes because mm -hmm. I'm telling you to go this way. Mm -hmm. So we purposely always maintain guidance from on high mm -hmm. um, when we decide to have a physical incarnation. Good. What was that? Y'all hey, know everything I, I believe about the royal family. All right. And this right here at the changing of the guards, the blues and the royals regiment. All right. That's Prince William's army battalion. And that never happens. 
All right, that never happens. All right, y'all, y'all, y'all should go watch this post. It's a couple before this one. Uh, but but listen, they're called dragoons. Okay, the Blues and the Royals, Royal Horse Guards and First Dragoons, formed in 1969. This unit is now part of the Household Cavalry. It is the second most senior regiment in the British Army and operate, operates as both an armored reconnaissance unit and a ceremonial guard of the monarch. And we know the Prince of Wales and the, the Red Dragon, the Little Horn, okay? Hey, I tell you what, it's all lining up. And um, the unit was one of the two house, household cavalry regiments in the British Army, the other being the lifeguards. It was formed in 1969 by amalgamating the Royal Horse Guards with the Royal Dragoons, First Dragoons, both of which had origins dating back to the mid 17th century. Dragoon means dragon, all right? Uh, infantry men, and it got their name by the fire that emitted out of their muskets. Sounds a lot like draconian too, which is a uh, reptilian and draconians are both, they say mythological humanoid creatures often depicted in popular culture, conspiracy theories and science fiction. <laughs> yeah, they always try to get us on that. But yeah, it is part reptilian, part humanoid, okay? Uh, Shapeshifters. Okay, and King Charles, when he was coronated, he went behind this veil and no one was able to see. Okay, no cameras, nothing. And I believe he shapeshifted behind this veil. Who else was behind a veil until Jesus died and bridged that gap between man and God? God was behind the veil. <laughs> yeah, the Ark of the Covenant and all authority in heaven and earth was given to the Son. In like manner, King Charles, out of the way, gives all authority automatically to the Son. Okay? And and because Satan always mocks God. Hey, y'all follow this stuff, man, because we're heading for some... <laughs> hey, th there's no better time in history to be alive than right now. Oh, man. What happened, man? Peace and duty. Yeah. Because apparently they don't want to make it. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so That is the coolest dog trick I've ever seen. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this animal is made there. All I gotta bed. do is point Hold and it. say, look, you guys, see? Things are falling out of the sky still. Look at this. This is a satellite that fell out of the sky on this lady's property. Y'all see this? Never know what's gonna happen. This baby fell out of the sky and landed in our yard. It's never boring on the Welke farm. Thank God there's no horses out or it didn't hit the house. And it's still going and flashing. You see, I'm a little confused here because um, why are satellites falling out of the sky? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just a little confused. Is that a weather balloon? I mean, it says Samsung on it. So is that China trying to get information on us, y'all? I'm trying to figure out why is satellites falling out of the sky. But nonetheless, things are still falling out of the sky. This is what I want to tell y'all. This is what I want to show y'all. I want to get across to you guys. Things are falling out of the sky because the magnetosphere of the earth is breaking down. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. And uh, yeah, th those, those times are here, you guys. I would tell you guys, you know, please be careful with flying this this summer. You know what I'm saying? Please be careful because these are messages. These messages are being sent. Regardless if you believe it or not, these are messages. The universe is talking to us because 
that's how the universe speaks to us by sending us these type of messages so let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comments down below like share and follow for more thank you for tuning to my frequency we end this shift y'all you already know what to do let's get it peace in oh good people of that is that how I said it looks like the people in power want you to know that private trust exists why do you think that is why do you think they wouldn't want you to know that you can create an entity on your own you can create an entity that you can do business with on your own without having to register one with the state why do you think that is why do you think they wouldn't want you to know that why do you think they wouldn't want you to know that it doesn't have to be part of the statutory laws, that it doesn't have to exist in that respective realm? Why do you think they wouldn't want you to know that? Well, when you start to know why, and you start to know the power of what it means to operate privately, you can never go back. You can never see operating ever again the way that you operated before, because you realize that there was so much that was being hidden right in front of your face. <laughs> There's so much more possibility in doing it privately than there is when you're operating in the public. Oh man, that is interesting. Oh yeah, look at this. Uh, this looks like some walk into some tunnel here with some creepy drawings so there were hmm. Looks like those Egyptian stuff. What do you think this is? Why is this place? Leave your comments on what you think this might be. You see this is script. Oh, some guy there is going and recording with his phone and showing us the drawings here. Maybe some most guy might identify what is drawn here. Hmm? If the sun you see, if I do it, thanks to everybody. And harming you, and it's too hot for you, it's because you have no connection to it. Point blank, period. Bye. What are the wheels within wheels described in Ezekiel's vision? Ezekiel's vision of the four wheels dramatically illustrates the omnipresence and omniscience of God. These wheels were associated with the four living creatures, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4, who were later described, Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 5 to 20, as cherubim, angelic beings appointed as guardians of the holiness of God. Each wheel was actually two in one with one apparently set inside the other at right angles which enabled the living creatures to move in any direction instantly without having to turn, like a flash of lightning. These wheels had the appearance of chrysolite, which may have been a topaz or other semi-precious stone. The outer rim of the wheels was described as high and awesome with the outer edge of the rims inset with eyes, Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 14 to 18. The spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels, Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 20 to 21. As a result, the creatures were able to move any direction the wheels moved. Most biblical scholars hold to the idea that the Spirit of God gave direction to the wheels through direct knowledge of and access to the will of God. The mobility of the wheels suggests the omnipresence of God, the eyes, his omniscience, and the elevated position, his omnipotence. This vision appeared to Ezekiel as a powerful imagery of movement and action demonstrating the characteristics of God's divine nature. Oh, I see that's uh, the end abruptly with the alien with the angel video. See, leave some comments on what to think about them. Do you think angels exist or not on all those videos that has passed? Leave some comments. Hit the like button, the super thumb, all those buttons there. You see, because humans are just wonderful and incredible. Like my friend was telling me the other day that the people from uh, Another place of the world to cook cabbage like this. And I was surprised how cabbage can be cooked. Which part of the cabbage do you guys cook? You see? How do you cook it? Do you boil it or something like that? Just can't understand how you can cook a sunbathed cabbage like this. Anyway, it's good vibes, man. Much love to all humans. Always hit the like button and some comment. Goodbye, man. Stick around for some fire episode that will be coming away. See you next time.